Welcome to the Wound Club Online Education Module on the importance of skincare pathways, which forms part of a series of modules you can access to develop your knowledge and understanding around wound management and skincare. Skincare can include a wide array of areas in wound management. This module will cover skincare pathways in relation to moisture associated dermatitis, or MASD. Today we will be discussing the importance of skincare pathways in relation to moisture associated skin damage, again, or MASD. By the end of this module, you'll be able to identify why a skincare pathway is needed to help manage MASD, understand the skincare pathway includes, and also how implementing a skincare pathway can inf um, impact the patient's care. Firstly, let's recap on what the four types of MASD are. MASD is defined as the inflammation and erosion of the skin caused by prolonged exposure to various sources of moisture. That includes urine, stool, perspiration, wound extate, mucus or saliva. It is generally accepted that MASD consists of four distinct conditions, each having a slightly different etiology, namely incontinence associated dermatitis, intertrigo, peri-wound moisture associated dermatitis and peristomal irritant contact dermatitis. It's important that you distinguish between the four conditions to ensure appropriate prevention and management. For more information around the four types of MASD, be sure to check out the MASD Wound Club Online module. MASD represents a significant problem and can have a negative effect on patients' well-being and quality of life. The development of MASD involves more than just bodily fluids alone. Rather, skin damage is attributable to multiple factors, including chemical irritants within the moisture source, its pH, associated microorganisms on the skin surface, and mechanical factors such as friction. This can cause significant distress to the patient and affect their well-being and their quality of life. From personal experience, I've also seen patients' mental health suffer from MASD and an increase in their healing time due to the misdiagnosis of the type of wound they have. For an IAD in particular, the precise number of patients affected is unknown due to the difficulty in distinguishing IADs from other wound types. Example, pressure ulcers. For the healthcare professional, MASD can affect costs on wound products and nursing time as well. From my pre previous experience, I have found my caseload increase due to the less patients healing. As there were confusion between treatment plans due to the misdiagnosis of MASD and other wounds. Vigilance in maintaining both optimum skin conditions and in diagnosing and treating early stages of MASD is important to prevent progression and skin breakdown. Risk assessment and prevention strategies are of key importance. Interventions can be taken to protect the skin and to prevent MASD, including the use of skin protection products such as barrier creams and liquid polymers to create a protective layer on the skin surface, as well as maintaining hydration levels whilst also blocking external moisture and irritants. Having skincare pathways in place gives clinicians a step-by-step -step guide on how to assess the patient's risk of developing MASD and how to treat it if it's already developed. A step-up, step-down approach can often be used which allows for use of multiple products dependent on the severity of the damage. And remember, when to adjust skincare once the area improves. We'll discuss the step-up, step-down approach in more detail later on. Having this tool can also save time. It allows a clear path in the product selection to reduce the time that may have been spent considering which to use and why. It takes out the legwork and a simple chart to quickly and easily follow. For example, Bayer et al introduced a structured skincare protocol in two nursing homes and found the presence of incontinence associated dermatitis was significantly lower after three months of implementation. And staff time per patient per day was reduced by 34 minutes. Staff costs of just under nine pounds were saved per patient per day. So what should a skincare pathway consist of? In theory, clinical pathways could be implemented in any area of healthcare, i.e. preventative, acute, chronic and palliative care. They mainly focus on the processes in relation to effectiveness, patient safety and or patient centeredness. Firstly, they should focus on the overarching aim and what they plan to achieve. 
and essentially how they plan to achieve this, including what steps are needed to accomplish that goal. They should include what the assessment criteria is, essentially what the clinician should look out for when assessing the patient for MASD. Then it will need to guide on what type of product should be used, dependent on the assessment and how that product should be used, e.g. how regularly to apply, what combination of products, etc. Sometimes cases will need to be referred to other healthcare teams. For example, if an infection appeared, then a specialist wound team would need to be included to develop the correct course of treatment. To help identify wound types and provide a guide for the clinicians using the pathway, example images of wounds can be included on the pathway. Pictures are often a valuable tool to explain what skin types requires what treatment. Lastly, the pathway should know how and when the patient should be reassessed once the pathway has been used and completed. Let's take a deeper look into IAD and how pathways can guide clinicians through preventing and treating them. Clinical pathways, or CPWs, are tools used to guide evidence-based healthcare. The aim is to translate clinical practice guidelines recommendations into clinical processes of care within a unique culture and environment of healthcare institution. A CPW is a structured multidisciplinary care plan with the following characteristics. It's used to translate guidelines or evidence into local structures, it details the steps in a course of treatment or care in a PAM pathway, algorithm, guideline protocol or other inventory of actions. It aims to standardise care for a specific clinical problem, procedure or episode of healthcare in a specific population. The first step of an IAD pathway is to assess the type of IAD. Evidence relating to the IAD classification is limited. The recently published Ghent Global IAD Categorization Tool provides alphanumeric categories and subcategories to describe the extent of skin damage. This is an example of how an IAD can be categorised. The categories have been split into four groups, healthy skin, mild excoriation, moderate excoriation and severe excoriation. Depending on the extent of the skin damage it will determine which treatment in the, is necessary and therefore which barrier products would be most suitable. Using the pathway from Beckman et al 2015, we can see that healthy skin category would need to go down the prevention route of the pathway and the mild to severe excoriation categories would need to go down the management route of the pathway. After the IAD type has been classified, the clinician is able to start managing the incontinence. For those patients who have healthy skin but are incontinent, are at risk of developing an IAD and should be checked at least once daily, dependent on the frequency of the incontinence episode. The clinician should inspect areas of the skin which could be affected by maceration, erythema, lesions, erosions or denodation in signs of fungal or bacterial skin infection. Key areas which should be checked include the perineum, perigenital areas, buttocks, gluteal fold, thighs, lower back, lower abdomen and skin folds. For patients with mild to severe excoriation, the clinician's priority should be to manage the incontinence and assess and treat the rever reversible causes. This usually begins with non-invasive behavioural interventions such as nutritional and fluid management and toileting techniques. Patients with IADs in the acute settings may also require temporary diversion of urine and faeces away from the skin to allow adequate skin protection and or healing. If there is no improvement within three to five days or if the skin is looking infected, refer to a specialist for further management. Once the reversible causes of incontinence have been assessed and treated, clinicians should look to implement a structured skincare regime which takes place daily or after each episode of faecal incontinence. The regime is split into three key areas, cleanse, protect and restore. Let's look in these in more detail. The cleanse stage includes cleansing of the skin of any irritants which may be present, to, including urine, faeces, to avoid further breakdown of the skin, Foam and spray cleansers or pH neutral soap should be used in place of traditional soap and water. Standard soap is an alkaline which can change the skin's pH and open up the skin to damage from other factors such as friction and shear. 
Instead, a skin cleanser with a pH range similar to that of normal skin is preferred to avoid any further skin breakdown. Foam and spray cleansers in particular contain a surfactant that removes soiling with minimal force, allowing healthcare professionals to avoid aggressive cleaning techniques with washcloths, which can further abrade the skin. Where skin cleansers are not available, cleaning with a pH neutral soap and water is also an option. Once the skin has been cleansed, it needs to be protected from exposure to urine and or feces and prevent IADs. Skin protectants are used in the prevention and treatment of IADs to form a barrier between the stratum corneum and any moisture or irritant. Skin protectants should also help promote resolution to IADs and allow the skin barrier to recover. Skin protectants can come in different formats such as creams, pastes, lotions or films and should be applied on all skin which comes into contact with or is at risk of coming into contact with urine and or faeces. Some patients may also benefit from an additional restore step to support and maintain the skin barrier function. This is accomplished by using a topical leave-on skincare product which are intended to moisturise the skin and restore the lipid matrix in the stratum corneum. Once the cleanse, protect and restore regime has been completed, it is important to re-evaluate the patient regularly. All assessments and plans of care should be documented in order to assess the chosen plan is effective. If there is no improvement of the skin after three to five days of a structured skincare regime, the care plan should be re-evaluated and referred to a specialist may be indicated. The IAD pathway we have just gone through is only one example of the skincare pathway, but there are others available. One very popular example is the use of a step-up, step-down approach. On the left, you can see an example of a step-up, step-down approach, which includes wound imagery of the different stages of skin conditions. The use of the imagery with the categorization is a valuable tool to identify the extent of skin damage and is not only useful to determine the product use but also to help with documentation. This categorization can then be matched with the cleanse, protect and restore pathway to determine which products to use at which stage. Other pathways are also available to help determine what type of MASD is displayed. Just remember, IAD is just one of the four types of MASD. This pathway you can see now has been adapted from the Dowser et al 2013 and it follows the use of implementing a structured skincare regime and treatment plan per type of MASD. You have now completed the Wound Club Online module on the importance of a skincare pathway. To check your knowledge and understanding, try and answer these quiz questions. Well done, we are now at the end of the module. Take the time to reflect on how you will take some of what you've learned and apply it into your daily practice. It might be useful to think of some patients in your care and reflect on their skincare and how you might manage this going forward. If you are on the NMC register, then please click at the link in the description below to access a copy of the revalidation form, which allows you for deeper reflection. Adding to this, reflection will mean that you'll be able to claim extra CPD minutes. Thank you for your time today and please remember to look at the other sections of the Smith and Nephew channel to access additional modules to help you on your learning journey.